Hey everyone, whenever you have a vote to decide something, the losers generally try to undermine and question the result, whether it be something like the EU referendum result or a more contentious issue like when work colleagues go for lunch and one person doesn't drink and they'd rather admit to selling company property on eBay than having to split the bill evenly. But this takes us to the topic of the recent election result in Zimbabwe, which has been contested by the opposition, who in this case have also been the opposition for the past 37 years, owing to the unique manner in which Robert Mugabe ran the country. I say unique, not really unique in that part of the world though. The ZANU-PF ruling party has claimed a victory with 50.4% of the vote. 50.4% of course being the same number as the daily rate of inflation or a few years back under Mugabe. 50.4 is also the number of years that the new president will likely serve once he's had time to amend the constitution and destroy his political opponents with the sort of violent ferocity you'd normally more associate with Diane Abbott and a chocolate flapjack. Going back to Zimbabwe though, the main take home from me was that if they had, as is alleged, rigged a vote, then the opposition would likely have received 40% of the vote compared to ZANU-PF's 85% of the vote. As many a party spokesman has said in that situation, stop thinking about the numbers, you'll only make your head hurt, especially once we've batted it in with a club and a government holding cell. At least you can be glad that if you're lucky enough to live in a rich western country, then the worst you have to put up with is a constant barrage of social media or the BBC and actually, you know, I'd frankly rather live in sub-Saharan Africa with no television than have to watch Neil Kinnock be interviewed about Brexit again. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click on the channel to subscribe.